say for just a moment, those of you who who came in late, uh, or if you ever come in late, I want you to know that I'm I'm thankful for you, especially when I worship from up here, because uh, sometimes prior to us beginning to sing, man, there's a there's a small crowd. Usually by the time I get up here, God just does something and people just appear out of nowhere. So uh, I'm thankful to turn around and look uh, and see there are more of you uh, here today. Uh, we were uh, doing really good for a couple of weeks there. Man, this place was, was packed. So you look around and, and see who's not here today and reach out and, and check on them and uh, make sure all is good. But today I am uh, I'm thankful for all of you, each and every person uh, here today, I'm thankful for your, your faithfulness to the Lord. And uh, Today, we're going to start uh, um, a, a new series for a couple of weeks, uh, and it has to do with faithfulness. Faithfulness. Where do, we, where do we get the idea of what faithfulness is or how we are to be faithful? And it's a pretty, uh, pretty easy answer. We all know the, the answer to that. And faithfulness, the example we need in that is in God. Amen? Our God is faithful. That would be another place for an amen. Our God is, is faithful. Man, if he wouldn't, I tell you, wouldn't none of us be able to be here today? God is, God is faithful. I know that uh, our, our faithfulness may not always be the exactly like God's, but when we want to know how we are to be faithful, then God is the example that, that we should follow. Our faithfulness should have some bearing to the faithfulness of the Father. But as you see this morning, our, our, our sermon title doesn't end there. God is faithful, but am I? And I know immediately some of you are thinking, well, man, he's fixing to get on to us about church attendance. Well, first of all, no, I'm not I'm not getting on anybody. I'm just sharing today what God put on my heart and going to share with you what God, uh, God's word says and everything after that's between you and him. And church attendance, a lot of times when we think of, of faithfulness, we immediately go to that as Christians and, and we think that's the only area. And we are called to be faithful. We're going to talk about that in church attendance. But we're called in, in so many different areas of our life to be faithful. I truly believe that if we were better imitators of the faithfulness of, of, of Christ, that we would be a, a, a lot, have a lot more joy and, and peace and, and happiness in our life. I, don't, I believe there wouldn't be as many broken homes and, and, and broken uh, marriages and, 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 and broken friendships if, if we were faithful just as God is faithful in, in so many different ways. And again, to, to look and, and understand, to start, if we say God is faithful, maybe you're here this morning and <clears throat> you kind of got an idea on that, but you're not a 100% or, or you know what, sometimes we need to be reminded. Sometimes we can be rocking along and, and everything is, is great and we forget how faithful that, that God really is. Sometimes we need to be reminded, and that's what part of this is uh, about today. If you're already familiar with the faithfulness of God, and, and, and I want you to, to, to don't take that step when, when I say um, that we might even talk about faithfulness in church attendance today. Don't, don't look around at them empty seats and, 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 and think that I'm, I'm preaching to the wrong people because we, <laughs> we joked about that this morning. You know, folks that, that, that aren't here, that used to be here, well, they need to hear today. They ought to hear it from you. You know, Mr. Tom re records this, and, and those guys put it up on the web. You can watch the video, or I don't like looking at myself. Actually, I don't even like hearing myself, but uh, they also have it on there where you can hear just the audio. You can download it to your phone and all that on the church's website. But they ought to hear something about faithfulness from you out of love, and you encourage them and find out if there's something that, that you can help them with. I'm so thankful there, was, uh, now there are different church members that will notice that people are missing, and they'll, they'll reach out to me and, and say, do you know what's going on with this person? And if, if, they, if it's a appropriate, then, then they'll reach out. They'll ask for phone numbers, and they reach out, and they call people, and, and they encourage people. And, and we should all be, be busy doing that. We should be faithful in encouraging others. But again, today, it's not just for those folks that aren't here. It's for us. None of us probably want to be open and, and honest about it. Unfortunately for you, you don't have to stand up here uh, in front of the church, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of times in my life where I'm not faithful. There's a lot of times in my life where I fail in, in, in many areas, just as you do. 
But coming back and, and getting into God's word and, and hearing God's word and allowing a God to speak reminds me of that faithfulness that I can achieve, that I can, I can work towards through God and, and his grace. So let's take just a couple of minutes and look through some verses that, that, that talk about, and it's all throughout the Bible. I'll just pick just a, a few, but talk about the faithfulness of, of God. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 7 and verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is good, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. God is faithful. God keeps his commandments. What God says he's going to do, he does. God keeps his, his love. His love is faithful. Man, can you imagine how marriages would stay together if, if we were faithful like that or friendships would stay together? Man, we, we love somebody one minute and we just all in love and the next minute, well, I'm done with them. Man, we need to be faithful like God is faithful. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Man, I'm so thankful that, that God is, is faithful in his love and his mercy and his, his grace towards me. If, it was, if that were not so, y'all, I'd be, well, I wouldn't be here this morning. I'd be somewhere else. Because if God wasn't faithful, he has every right and every reason to have cast me away a, a long time ago. But God is, is faithful. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. It doesn't matter where you are in your relationship with God today, where, where it stands, how long you've known him, or how new your relationship with, is with him this morning. He's faithful. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. You know God is, is faithful. God is faithful in his protection and his watch care over you. You know, Satan's out there all the time. Maybe he's been on you lately. He, the Bible describes him of, of, of roaring around like a, of going around like a, a lion and, and looking who he can attack. I mean, y'all felt that attack before. Talks about fiery darts. Man, I got sore spots all over my back. But God is faithful to protect us from all of that. If we realize how faithful God is, we might realize it's God that's brought us through where we are. God never said that we wasn't going to th go through uh, trials and temptations. We're going to go through tough times, amen? I pray today that even if it's not you, that you know when you leave here today that if at some point in your life you were just so on fire for the Lord and, and he was all you could think about and you wanted to do things with him all the time, and then now you're not. You wanted to spend time with him uh, daily. You wanted to read your Bible. I've heard of people getting saved, and they, they read the Bible from beginning to end. I had a friend one time who was an alcoholic, a drug user, and I'm talking the hard stuff. And God came into his life, and he locked up in a hotel room for a weekend. And man, he argued and fought and wrestled. And then he finally gave in to God. And he read the whole Bible through and through. And for many years, he led people to the Lord. He shared what God had, had done in, in his life. He was a great instrument in my life. And to my understanding today, I've reached out, and I can't seem to, to get him to respond to me, but my understanding, he's, he's moved away, but, but he's no longer on fire for the Lord. He no longer wants to have any fellowship or anything to do with God. So let me ask you this morning, what, why is his life different? Why is his uh, relationship and his fellowship with God different? It's because his, his circumstances changed. God's still there. God still loves him. God is still faithful to him. And I know God has sent many messengers. I know I'm not the only one that God has put on my heart. Man, you reach out to him, and, and I've tried. And I still pray that one day he's going to come back around. I, I know that story is, is to the extreme, but I want to remind you this morning that God's word says that he doesn't change. 
God's word says he is faithful. He stays the same. And, and his love for you, no matter where you are, or what you think you've done, or how you think you failed him, or how you think your situations mean that, that you don't need him, God still loves you, and it's still the same. God is faithful. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide you a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And sometimes we get off in, and we think that, that maybe we have failed so much that God can't even use us. Sometimes we get off and we begin to, to beat ourselves up and we can't even understand why we continue to, to fail over and over. Well, I think part of it is, is that we forget this. I pray that you get in your, your head today, not that God's not going to give you anything that you can't overcome, okay? God's not going to let you be uh, tempted in anything that you can't overcome. See, that's where we mess that up. That's man's word. God said he's always going to provide you an out. In his power, in his mercy, in his grace, we can overcome temptation. So if you've been somewhere in your life and, and, and you've been failing, maybe um, your faithfulness is, is to God is not what it once was or what it should be. The only thing that changed there is you forgot that, that God has given you away. We didn't look for it. A lot of times it's because we, we try to get through things on our own. We try to handle things on our own. Y'all, I promise you, God still loves you the same way that he did the day that you said yes to Jesus. How many of you remember that feeling, that day you said yes to Jesus? Man, it, it breaks my heart sometimes. A, when I think about the number of times that God loved me so much that he reached out to me over and over, and I just, oh, I don't want none of that. And then I think about the times in my life, even after where I made Jesus Lord of my life, and, and I really did surrender to him, but I forgot that. And then I wanted to pick up and, and take control on my own, and, and, and I wanted to be in charge. And that's where I got over. Then temptation would come along, and I thought I could handle it and do things on my own, and I was so far away from God that I forgot that, that God was the one that gave me an out. It wasn't me that was supposed to figure my way out. Man, you're talking about those escape rooms. You try to get in one of those, it's hard to try to figure out on your own. But I promise you, when you get in the escape room of, uh, of temptation and trapped in the, the bondage of temptation, that, that God provides a solution. God shows you a, a, a way out. God is faithful. Numbers 23, 19, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. He has, has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? No, oh, God loves you. That doesn't, that doesn't change. God wants close, intimate relationship, fellowship with us, with you, with every one of us. God is faithful, and he doesn't, he doesn't change the, the things that, that he says in his word. You can go from the back to the front. The only thing that changes are the dates and the names, but God's the same all the way through. God don't lie. Man, we could learn from that. If we would treat people that way, if we would love people the way that God does, if we could keep our word the way that God does, you know what, if we could, if we could keep our, our heart in the commitment that we made when we bowed to the Lordship of Christ. You know what Lordship is? Lord, Lord, Lordship means that you're taking that person as your master. We all understand the, the concept of a master and his, and his slaves. That means you do whatever is directed by the master. And, and we do that. We get so on fire in every aspect of our, of our life when we make Jesus Lord of our life. And, and I pray that, that your experience was like that. I can tell you that's how mine was in the genuineness that I see in some folks when they get saved and they have this desire to see other folks get saved. But our heart changes. It says, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Man, sometimes we lay our, our, our life down and give God control and then we, we pick it back up. I, I don't know what it is. And, and y'all, please, I promise, I don't want to offend anybody today, okay? I've got soft sole shoes on. If I stepped on your toe, 
I've lost a little weight. It won't hurt as bad. I'm not here to step on your toes. I'm preaching to me too, y'all. But what is it? Y'all, I, I don't understand what it is other than it's our sin nature and God's the answer to it. But why when, when things come up in life from anywhere from, from busyness to tragedy so quickly, the very first thing to be replaced by all the bad is the good, is God. We, we're all guilty of that. And this morning, I pray if you're sitting there, don't look around the room and say, yep, he's talking about Dwayne. I'm talking about Dwayne, but I'm talking about you, and I'm talking about me. I've been there. I've done that. We should not let anything come between us and our relationship with God. Our relationship with God should be something that, again, the highlight of it is not the salvation experience. That's the beginning. Our relationship with God is supposed to get better and better and better. And if you spend time with him, it will. If you're faithful in as many areas of your life as you can, then by his grace, being faithful, by his mercy, being faithful, man, it's an awesome relationship. Psalm 36, 5, your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Psalm 91, 4, he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. And if you want to know where real comfort is, where real peace is, when those, when those fiery darts come from Satan, and they come in all different forms, from relationships to friends to financial problems to, to, to medical problems to you name it. When those things are coming at you, you want a shield to get behind that, the, you know when I said I had pain in my back? I had pain in my back because I tried to take them on my own. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Under his wings, you'll find refuge. God is faithful, are we? Revelation 19, 11, then I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. The one sitting on it is called faithful and true and in righteousness, he judges and makes war. Mm. I believe what God's word says, right? You know why Jesus is called faithful? because he is. He's faithful in all things. This morning, I pray that you have put your, your faith at some point, that you put your, real, your, your faith really in Jesus. And through the faith that you have in him, through his faithfulness of his, his love, his commitment, faithfulness in your, your salvation that is, that is of him and, and from him, that you realize today that, that we ought to be faithful back. It's just a natural it ought to be a natural thing. God is faithful, are we? Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. But folks, again, I, I'll tell you, I, I want to make sure that, that you understand that I'm, I'm not calling on anyone in here. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When, when I first got saved, we were so on fire. Tanya had just got saved before that. We were... I was 25 when I got saved, and um, we were on fire. And we were at the doors. We were going to church. We lived on the far side of Horn Lake, and we were going to church in Barton, Mississippi, when Goodman Road was two lane. It took a long time to get there. But if the doors were open in that place, we were there. We were excited. Well, then you move forward. We started a, a Bible study. I wasn't teaching it because I had a lot of learning to do. Uh, a friend of mine was teaching it at, at our house, and, and people came. People now were driving from Barton to our house in, in, in Horn Lake, and we filled the house up. This started as, as me going to this guy saying, man, Tiny, I want to know more about the Lord. We want to know his word. Will you come and teach us? And then we invited somebody. Then somebody else wanted to know, and then the neighbors started coming. Before it was over, we'd have 35, 40 people, more than we even have here on Wednesday nights sitting in chairs in our front yard. And then all of a sudden, we got busy. And we had a baby. It became a, a priority. Y'all trust me, we know Kaylee cried like the first three years of her life. Having raising a kid is tough. It's still tough today, 21 years later, but I wouldn't replace that for anything in the world. 
But we begin to say, you know, we're just too busy. We have too much going on. We don't have time to have all this at our house. We're just too busy to make it out there on Wednesday night. We'll come on Sunday morning, but we're not coming back on Sunday night. And before it was over with, we found ourselves we didn't even go to church anymore. We found ourselves, I remember driving down the road. I was going to my parents' house. I can take you in. show you on the road where it was but I got so far away from God I knew it there was no secret I knew it I didn't talk to anybody about it. I knew it I had people inviting me to church but I got so far away from God that I tried to pray and I couldn't pray I couldn't even pray Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever God didn't move it wasn't him that, that created this. It was me. I let my circumstances control me and, and take me to this point. I'm, I'm thankful that, that many people in, invited us to, to church and many people tried to, to, to witness to us and encourage us. And I'm thankful and I encourage you to do that to people. But it finally came to a point where I had to realize it was me that had moved away from God. It wasn't God that had, had moved away from me. God is faithful. The same Jesus that I was so excited about he was still right there with his arms wide open for me. And again, there are, again, don't get caught up today in, in thinking there are so many different areas of, of faithfulness that we need to be thinking about. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's probably one of the most important ones right there. It started with the, his, his love and the faithfulness of his love. But our sins are, are forgiven if we put our faith in him. This morning, if, if Satan's been on your back and Satan's been holding you back or there's, there's something out there in life that has, has come between you and your walk with the Lord, I, I pray this morning that you understand that, that, that God hasn't changed. If you look around, you'll find out it was just the circumstances changed. Maybe you changed. But God will take you back right where you are. We're called to be faithful like he is faithful. Hebrews 6, 18, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. God is, God is faithful. God doesn't change. God doesn't tell a lie. We can look all through this and find out that there is testimony after testimony of, of God's faithfulness. Today, if you've, if you've found yourself not being faithful to God, you can remember, I'm, I'm not just talking about church attendance. That's important. But you know the other areas of your life. You know where sin has crept back in. You know where no prayer time. No reading God's word, no fellowship with him, no joy, no peace, no serving the Lord. Maybe even in your, your marriage, your home, your finances, all these, all these different ways. That's what I'm talking about. God is, is faithful. He'll be faithful to you and all that. We're called to be faithful to him and all that. Let's pray and thank God for his faithfulness. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you this morning. Lord, we thank you that, that you are faithful. Lord, we thank you that not only does your word show over and over and over that you're faithful, it says you're faithful. People said you were faithful. You showed your faithfulness. Lord, we can look at our own lives. We can look right now where we are and God know that you're still faithful to us. 
God, your word said that, that you had a, a plan for us. God, you're faithful in that. Father, I pray this morning that, that you might, Lord, convict our hearts. Lord, start with me. God, help me to be the child of God that I'm supposed to be. Lord, help me to be the, the servant to you that I'm supposed to be. Lord, help me to live my life that I glorify you. Lord, help me to be the, the husband and the father that I'm supposed to be. The friend, the brother, the family member. Let me be faithful to you in all of that that you might be glorified. Father, let me be the pastor that I'm supposed to be. Let me preach your word faithfully. Not with my opinion. God, only sharing what you through your spirit lay on my heart. God, you are faithful. Lord, I pray today that Lord, you would give us all a, a new desire, a new encouragement, a new filling of your spirit that as we are reminded of, of your faithfulness that, that we too are God, we're called to be faithful. We're to follow your example. Lord, show us right now, while we sit here right now, Lord, show us the areas. God, well, we're not faithful to you. Lord, some we already know, you've been convicting our, our hearts since we sit here. We, we got up yesterday knowing where we were not faithful to you. But Lord, maybe today there's more. I thank you that we can find forgiveness in you. Lord, we confess our unfaithfulness to you. We confess that we, we, we've got, off in the, got caught up in the, the things of the world and we, we turn from you. We changed our, our priorities. Lord, forgive us of that. Lord, we know you will. Your word says that, <laughs> Lord, that you're faithful to forgive us. Father, today give us a, a new spirit, a new joy, a new desire to have close intimate fellowship with you. And let that spill over into all areas of our life from, from church attendance to, to giving, to, to spending time with, with you and, and reading your word and, 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 and Lord, pouring our heart out to you. And Lord, teach us that sometimes we even got to sit and listen to you. Father, my prayer today is, is every person in here has a personal experience with you, a newness with you today. God, we know you're faithful. Lord, I pray you would find us faithful. Father, I long for that day for that opportunity to, to bow before you. Lord, and to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Lord, I believe for all those who are here today that know you, Lord, that that is their prayer too. And Father, we know that we're only gonna hear that through your power. Father, I pray that, Lord, you just do a mighty work in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible does say that there's going to come a, a time, y'all can come on up, boy. There's going to uh, come a time where we are going to be before God. And, you know, we're either going to hear well done, thy good and faithful service, servant, through the, the, the shed blood of Christ. We're either going to hear that or we're going we're to hear depart from me for I never knew you. And that, that breaks my heart to think that someone has, has ever come through the doors of this church or that I've ever in, encountered on the side of the road and had more than 30 seconds with them that they might spend eternity in hell separated 
from God. Because there's going to come a time where some folks are going to hear, depart from me for I never knew you. If you don't know Jesus today, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, remember we said that if you've never made Jesus the, the master of your life, hand your everything, every part of your life over to him, not just your Sunday mornings. Today's the day. From the very beginning of time, God knew you. He knew every, every hair on your head. He knew you were going to be here today, and God says to you again today, my, my grace is sufficient. My love for you hasn't changed. Today, would you just give over to him? Just say yes to Jesus. God put something on your heart today, whatever it is you need to work out with him. I pray that you would take care of that before you leave this place today.